Mike. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, before I begin, I would like to thank uh, Reload Greece for having us. Uh, it's my first time actually here, and uh, I'm really inspired for what's coming up. Uh, I have to congratulate everyone for what they've been doing uh, for a couple of years now, and I think uh, uh, there's a bright uh, future ahead of them. Um, I also like to thank you for attending that session. And uh, before we go to the questions, I would like to uh, give you a brief, a brief bio of uh, our esteemed panel. Uh, we have uh, in the middle Mr. Pr uh, Professor uh, Dimitris uh, Buchalis, who is the head of the Department of Tourism and Hospitality and director of the Ecotourism Lab at Bournemouth University. He's a leading specialist in strategic management and marketing in the technology and tourism sector, and he's also BU representative to the United Nations uh, WTO. Uh, we have on, to my left Mr. Yanis Woulios, who is currently the Deputy Secretary of uh, De Deputy General, uh, Secretary General for the Greek uh, National Tourism Organization. He has uh, wealth. Uh, uh, wealth of experience in the advertising sector and uh, having held uh, several positions in multinational companies he's here to share the marketing aspect uh, of uh, tourism and what we need to expect and to last but not least uh, Mr. Alexandros Vasilikos uh, he's the president of the Hellenic uh, Chamber of Hotels uh, he was uh, the CEO of a very successful hotel group called Air Hotel and he was the founder of Web Hotel and president of the Athens Attica Hotel Association. So, guys, uh, thank you all for being here. I think uh, we finally made it. It is the first time we have tourism in a panel of uh, in an innovation summit, uh, which for me it's something extremely uh, indulging, I would say. Um, tourism is not Uber or Spotify. Uh, is not the words that you hear uh, actually uh, and we see in our phone but it is something uh, that is of great uh, significance for our country. Uh, Greece have really, uh, tourism has really exceeded itself I would say and uh, the expectations of everyone's this year. Uh, we had a great year, a great summer for the country and um, I hope that uh, we're able to give everyone uh, uh, something to, as a takeaway value to take with them uh, after this session. So, uh, Professor Buchalis, uh, I would like to start with you first. Uh, you traveled a lot and you have uh, witnessed the growth, the maturity and the decline of several uh, tourism destinations. Could you give us an example of a country or a nation that has used its resources to maintain a well-known product? And which one would you say has been the most innovative in terms of strengthening their industry? Thank you very much. Great pleasure to be with you and talk about tourism. And obviously, Reload Greece um, is, is tourism is a critical uh, 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 industry for uh, developing Greece after the crisis. And the resilience of, of tourism is, is really, really strong. And also the opportunity of tourism to bring uh, benefits to remote areas that they wouldn't islands or uh, areas like um, on, on the mainland they wouldn't have other opportunities to develop it's absolutely critical so therefore I think tourism is in the heart of the agenda of, of reloading Greece um, when you look on the international experience and what's happening around the world you see that there are very few countries that have got so many assets and so many resources like Greece uh, Greece phenomenal in terms of a tourism resource and um, yet it does not fully capitalize on that. Now, going back to your question about uh, international best practice, what you tend to find is that the people that they do not need tourism so much are the ones that they're taking care of their tourism resources better. So it's the, it's the countries that have got better regulating systems, the countries that they are following the law, the countries that have got fully planning um, a process running that they are actually doing a better job in looking after the resources and their sustainability. So we're talking about Scandinavian countries, we're talking about anything north really, 
and um, we are talking about places where they're not so much dependent on tourism. When you go into places where they absolutely depend on tourism, I've done a lot of work in Thailand, I've done a lot of work in Egypt, I've done, I just came back from Oman, um, where they absolutely need tourism, you find that the, they use resources really, really badly. Now, best example, I really love Barcelona, uh, because Barcelona is such a, a fantastic tourism destination that has got all kinds of different aspects. Um, and what they are doing is they are managing the destination really, really well. Um, they've, got, they've got the seaside, they've got the conference business, they've got all kinds of, they've got the art, they've got the history, the cultural heritage, all of those things. And they are managing that all together. Now, interesting, following after Uber and the sharing economy, with the Airbnb of this world, they had a huge issue about how many people were renting uh, second homes effectively in Barceloneta. And I'm working now with the municipality of Barcelona to look into what they've have they done to actually manage that. Because they went in with, um, they developed a partnership with Airbnb and they closed down 4,000 properties because they are not following the regulations. They are managing, so two or three years ago they had 18 inspectors. Now they've got 80 inspectors from 1.8 to 8.0. And they're managing their destination in the best possible way. So if you really look for um, best, best example on the Mediterranean <coughs> destination, um, I'll say Barcelona. I'm also a great fan of Portugal, the way that they're doing things. There's one word in Greek that's called Nikokirema, and that kind of, they, they do it in that kind of way. They, they do it, they manage their resources, they understand what they're happening, they're obeying the law, they, they operate within the planning. Interesting, interesting. Um, and now I'd like to come to you, Mr. Williams. Uh, innovation has finally entered tourism as well. And there are many creative entrepreneurs and startups who are keen to invest, innovate, and excel in an industry in one of the oldest Greek industries in the world. Would you care to mention some innovations that you feel have redeveloped the traditional tourism model? I would disagree that it has reached the uh, tourism industry. I think it has taken place already. Uh, digitalization and innovation, it's already a fact in the uh, tourism industry, <coughs> and I believe successfully. Uh, actually, it's key to our aim to succeed, to make our cities and our uh, all destinations easily accessible. This is a, a target for the ministry. And I will say, I will not give you past examples, because I'm looking always forward, I will give you an example that will show that we might speed up. Uh, I, an example that happens in the United States, there is a hotel that uh, asks its guests to submit the digital gadgets before they book in. That means to have quality time. So things go fast. So I think we have digitalization. Uh, as a ministry, we have already designed and uh, submitted to the Ministry of uh, Psyphiaki Synaptics digitalization, uh, our ecosystem platform to have all information for uh, visitors and businesses for tourism. So we are ahead, I think. Hopefully. Um, Mr. Vasilikos. Working closely with hoteliers over the years, can you tell us about one or two innovations that you felt really were really impressive for you, based on your experience? Uh, I would have to say uh, we, we can get into details of uh, single hoteliers uh, uh, doing great things uh, in the country and in different uh, destinations, obviously, and in different fields, but. Uh, following this morning's discussions, I think that uh, the, the main point I'd like to make on that question is uh, the global way that hoteliers uh, look at innovation today. I was very happy uh, to see this morning in the introductory video uh, Katerina Sadiku, and uh, we've been working very closely with Katerina over the past few month, months, and we have uh, they're in the process of creating a cluster for uh, tourism startups. And I'm happy to say we have announced it already, so it's uh, public knowledge, 
that the Chamber of Hoteliers, the Hoteliers of Greece, uh, adopted uh, this cluster and will cover all the expenses of the cluster uh, for the years to come. This is uh, something I believe, uh, I heard a question this morning from a, a lady called Margarita, uh, what is the role of the state? Uh, I think that what we need to find and the Chamber of Hoteliers that represents all 10,000 hotels in Greece, I think has found this role. Uh, we need to decide, like the title of uh, today's event, if we are here to challenge or if we are here to solve. So we have made the choice to be here to solve. We are creating the ecosystem, we are creating a, an accelerator in order to give the possibility to Greek startups in tourism uh, to, to look, look at things differently and, and solve the, the first stage of their uh, evolution. So I think this is the biggest innovation we've had uh, so far, and I'm very much looking forward to what should be up and running in uh, Q1 2019. Interesting. Um, Professor Buhalis, lately we've been hearing the term smart tourism. What is smart tourism? And would you care to give us some examples, please? Yeah, uh, it's very interesting. Um, so, smart tourism is really the evolution or the revolution of the adoption of technology in, uh, in the tourism industry. Now, uh, smartness is really about interoperability, interconnectivity of networks. So in the past, we had a company like Aerotel or whoever was operating their system on a silo and they made sure that they're operating in appropriate way so they can be profitable. Smartness takes advantage of uh, innovations takes advantage of the ecosystem. We keep talking about the ecosystem, but a lot of people do not necessarily understand what the ecosystem is. But anybody, all the stakeholders, are really responsible for, for co-creating the tourism experience. And it's really about engaging all the different networks to come together to actually support the, the tourism experience. Um, so smartness is really about bringing together all the networks from different, different organizations that they may be private organizations, government organizations, or even individuals, or even fellow travelers, and make sure that all that creates um, uh, a better experience for all the stakeholders and benefits for all the stakeholders. Um, this is quite complicated, actually, because there are so many different players. So two weeks ago, I was in Korea, I was in Seoul, and I went to the uh, smart system of Seoul um, uh, city they've got 30,000 cameras that they are checking everything that's happening in real time. And accordingly, what's happening is that they are having different kind of alerts, they've got different kind of ways of looking into things. Um, they've got, if they've got earthquakes, they, they just get signals early on and they, they bring everything together. Now, my work in Bournemouth University and my e-tourism lab is looking into how you can take that and maximize the benefit for all the stakeholders. So I was speaking to the mayor from Trikala early on, and I said, um, we really want to bring all the different players from Trikala to improve the experience of the customer. Maybe the winemakers, maybe um, agricultural fi um, uh, players, maybe hoteliers, maybe um, uh, transportation companies, maybe um, Meteora, maybe all of those things happening. And increasingly, what we see is that tourists are going away from the normal standard kind of package. And they are moving towards very specialized types of experience. So if you're really a wine lover, you've got a totally different path on where you're going. Uh, by the way, I'm going on Monday to Thessaloniki because uh, Greece is um, uh, hosting the, the Silk Road. And I'm speaking there about smart tourism. And it's really about the Silk Road that goes all the way from China coming all to Europe and, and all the rest of it. So this is a road, this is a path that, can, that have got specific interest. So people who are following that have got specific interest. And smart tourism is really about co-creating that experience, bringing all of those people together. So it, it's interesting. And, and I, I'm hearing you talking about the different uh, means of tourism and, and by you talking to the mayor before. And I, I heard Mr. Williams before talking about the hotel and the experience. So is tourism becoming an experience uh, are, we, are we leading ourselves into an experience era of tourism that Absolutely. people would be interested in having different kind of experiences 
when visiting Greece, when visiting a place? Absolutely. Tourism is an experience. It's always been an experience. I, in my youth, I used to be a photographer in the Club Med. And we understood that um, years and years, 30 years ago, that when people were coming in to a Club Med or to a country, when you arrived in London yesterday, you have an experience that is everything that you're doing around London. And maybe a good experience or a bad experience, but overall, when you leave tomorrow or whenever, you're going to have a, a, a comprehensive kind of um, experience that has been co-created with the different players. Maybe the metro station, maybe the taxi, maybe the restaurants, maybe the theater that you may go, all of those actors that are coming together. Now, what smartness is giving us the opportunity to do is individualize, contextualize, and understand what experience we're going to give you. Now, for those of you who arrived this morning, this morning was fairly dry. By the time we leave here, it's going to be rainy. So the experience that you're going to have is different. As a tourism provider, as a tourism experience maker, as a national tourism organization, I should be able to understand what's happening in my context and change your, change your behavior, change your experience. So um, this morning, I would have said, walk through the Hyde Park. This afternoon, I'll say, I know that's going to be raining. I know that you wouldn't really like to walk on the rain. So I'm proposing to you to go to a musical. Here is five theaters that they've got uh, tickets for tonight. Now, from the supply point of view, if I had all the tickets of, of London tonight, so let's say that I've got the capacity of 40,000 seats. I'll optimize these 40,000 seats and trying to find who is the most appropriate person and contextually send to that person that information at the price that he can afford at the, at the place where he can go. So technology is enabling us to do proactive and reactive things. Proactively, we are just um, uh, doing all the segmentation. We're engaging. We are channeling the right thing to the right person. Reactively, we're looking to the context. And when you understand the context and you understand what went right, what went wrong, you start looking to how can you match resources to experiences. Interesting. Um, Mr. Williams, we have a lot of uh, young entrepreneurs who are seeing an industry that is rebooming is actually, uh, as I mentioned before, one of the strongest, uh, one of the strengths of our country, of Greece. What would you say to them? Uh, what are the key elements of success that, uh, uh, of the successful things that Greece did in order to, to become one of the world's uh, greatest destinations? Uh, I will build on the previous session I will say that uh, coming as well from advertising, uh, the base of success is always a solid strategy. Strategy, strategy, strategy. A second thing is to follow the strategy with consistently. And thankful we are the example to prove that there are no all cases like it was mentioned before. We have the same strategy created in 2015, followed consistently and happily by the same minister the last four years. So we are following the same strategy consistently. And the strategy is not just resting on our, let's say, sea and sun offering or on uh, heritage, cultural heritage. We try to persuade the world that we are the ideal destination for 30, 65 days. And the figures we see the last few years uh, prove that we are succeeding. But I really believe it's strategy, strategy, strategy. We have creative work that gets awards all over the world, our tourism videos, but I think is the solid strategy and the consistent thing. Interesting. If I may uh, <coughs> echo on the, on, on the question you asked and uh, talking to the entrepreneurs, because we see today uh, a lot of interest uh, in, uh, in tourism in Greece from part of entrepreneurs, whether it's funds or it's uh, young people who want to enter the field. Um, I think that uh, what, what we need to be careful about and what you have to bear in mind if you want to enter tourism is that there is space and there is room for everybody. Uh, there is uh, 
the possibility to create. And um, the, I would say the, the only thing you need to avoid, uh, it's, um, uh, I cannot translate it in, uh, in English, but I will, uh, I will try to explain it, is the Buluki effect. Uh, Me too. The, the Buluki effect uh, is when we used to play f soccer at school and the ball would go there and all 20 players would go there. Then suddenly someone would kick the ball there and all 20 players would go there. So there's no strategy involved, there's nothing, we just follow the ball. Unfortunately, we've seen this with many examples in the past in Greece, whether it was video clubs, uh, solar panels, uh, uh, yogurt. <laughs> frozen yogurt, frozen yes, yogurt. My, fa my, favorite, uh, uh, my favorite example. Today, I'm afraid that we're seeing this in beds, whether it's hotels, whether it's Airbnbs, or rent a room, etc., etc. Uh, be sure that if you enter tourism just with creating a bed or 10 or 100, uh, you'll be gone in five years. There is no uh, longevity and there is no viability to this product. But on the other hand, if you enter targeting a niche market, there is still so much space in Greece to create products and to enrich the experience that, that, that our land has blessed us with. I'm not, being, you know, I'm not trying to sell Greece, but it, it is a fact that we have possibilities. Uh, but we have not uh, today still um, reached, we're far from 100%. So that, there's a lot of room for improvement, and there's a lot of room for uh, young entrepreneurs to enter the, the tourism market. Keep in mind that we are running the last three years almost with a double percentage of the world uh, average increase of tourism. Uh, indicatively, I will say that in 2017, world tourism increased by 6.7%, which is very impressive. The Greek tourism average is 9.7. So th consistently, the last three years, we are running almost 30 to 50 percent above the world average in Greece. Greece. So it's not by chance. It's by hard work and the right strategy, I would say. Impressive, impressive numbers. Mr. Vasilikos, I will come back to you and what you mentioned before, not the Buluki effect, obviously, but uh, what, what, would you, what would you recommend? I mean, you, you are a person who has really lived through your uh, youngest years uh, in the hotel industry. Your family uh, has been in the industry for quite some time. Uh, you, so you've seen the good days and the bad days. And we have a, a crowd of uh, entrepreneurs here. What would you say to them uh, to, to look into opportunities? Would it, would it be the experience? Would it be the intermediate services? Would it be the assets? Because the funds that you mentioned below, b before was uh, basically, to my perspective, most of the assets are being, uh, actually most of the money is being given into assets, into building hotels, into building rooms, and so on and so forth. So what would you say would be uh, an innovative strategy for the sector of tourism? Well, I, like I said before, I think the, the, there's a very wide range and it all depends on your background and where you're coming from, if it's technological, if it's uh, uh, any experience that can be and is attached to tourism. Today, you know, we, we, we have the, uh, many times we see that we separate tourism from everyday life, but tourism is everyday life. You just go and live everyday life in another country. So what you want to see is the best of everyday life in another country. And this is so wide. I mean, you cannot limit it uh, to, 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 to a few categories. You, uh, you have to look at everything. And this is, this is the beauty of it. Uh, you've had many uh, products uh, that have, we, we used to, if, if you look at hotels, for instance, in the, let, let's say uh, over the past decades, we've had some breakthrough at least at the time, was considered breakthrough. Uh, flat screen TVs. I think that many of you remember the time where flat screen TVs were not in, uh, in the supermarkets to buy. You would find them in hotels. At other times you had uh, power showers, queen size beds, all th these things that came out in the market later on and were commercialized for, for the wider public. But at some point it was uh, in hotels. So today, technology, and production runs so fast and the information is so fast as well that it's, it's much harder for hotels 
to find the product that will differentiate and will make you innovative because today you cannot have a queen size bed and say it's an innovation but at some point in history it was you would go to a hotel and see a king or a queen size bed and say wow because it doesn't fit in my apartment because I do not find it, find it in the market to buy so today it's much harder and you you cannot uh, you cannot go uh, before technology. You will never be able to isolate innovation in a hotel. At the same time, and this is a big difference with the past decades, it will go on the market as well. So what's left? It's experience. And you can have as much AI as you want. Obviously, AI enters tourism as well. You, will, you can have uh, as many startups as you want. You can build anything you want in terms of experience. At the end of the day, you have a basic rule in tourism you're facing the client and you have to smile. And it all comes down to, to, to the, the, the contact you have, uh, your personnel, and, and, and the way you, you, you look at, uh, at the client and make him feel the experience you want to offer. So you, you can see everything as tools, AI, uh, startups, uh, innovation, and all that. At the end of the day, the client's here and has to have a good time. It's, it's funny that you mentioned AI. I was a... Uh uh, the conference here in London of uh, technology and uh, a company present came up with uh, a model of uh, I mean pretty much everyone knows Alexa um, that they signed a contract with a big hotel with a big hotel chain to put one Alexa in every single room so instead of picking up the phone and, and saying I want a bathrobe or I want some more towels you just say Alexa I, I need some more towels and then your somebody knocks on your door ten minutes later so it's, it's quite impressive how technology can really, and innovation can really uh, influence the traditional industries. Um, profession, uh, Professor Buchalis, uh, obviously 2018 was a very great year for Greek uh, tourism. We had uh, 32 million, I think, uh, tourism, uh, tourists uh, visiting right. Greece. Uh, what would you say are some of the advantages that Greece has over other destinations that you've you've visited, and uh, how can we utilize that against the competition? Okay, there are two or three things here. One is uh, Greece is a very unique destination. Um, it has got so much resource in terms of our cultural heritage, our history, our, uh, our islands, and everything else that goes, all, all different landscapes. I've been living in the UK for about 30 years. People are asking me, where's the best place to go to Greece? And I said, what for? And then you start having a, a list of different things. Um, so that's the good thing we've got. What's the not so good thing that we've got? We don't have a lot of innovation. The tourism industry has not been very innovative. And they expected quite often that someone is gonna bring the innovation from somewhere outside. And what you find is that, is that most of the innovation is coming from uh, outsiders from the industry. Um, if you go to the taverna, it has got the same menu. You go next door, it has got the same menu. It's got the same price, same menu. You start looking for something different, you know, gluten-free, food for diabetics. Um, our colleague from Stevia is here. Um, so you start looking into, how can I change things? The conversation we had during the break. What is the best destination to go for tennis, for a tennis lover? Where would you go for a tennis, f to play tennis? Because you've got, you're blessed with fantastic um, uh, climate that you can play tennis all year round, but you don't have specialized kind of places. And I think this is what we need to start looking at. We need to start looking at the consumer, what the consumer is looking for when they go into a place and come all the way backwards. Mm -hmm. and, and then we start looking into innovations on product how can we change the product and the process? I mean, Alexa was very shy, but I always say that his hotels have changed the Greek breakfast. He introduced the, the Greek breakfast, and then this was taken on by a lot of other people, by bringing a few little things, little changes, that made, it, made someone to understand when they arrive in a Greek hotel that it's a different hotel than if they have gone to Turkey, to Portugal, or to Spain. So we need to differentiate. We need to look for innovations. Process. Every time I go to a hotel, they ask me exactly the same stuff. Can you register? Give me your passport. Give me your credit card. Give me all those things. Why would I need to do that? Check in time, um, 3 o'clock. Check out time, 11. Why would I need to do that? 
breakfast time. I always go to hoteliers when I, I do training for hoteliers, and I ask them, and I said, are you smart? They say, yeah. I said, are you innovative? Yeah, of course. Until what time can I have breakfast in your room, in your hotel? 10 o'clock. 10.25, you are late, you cannot have breakfast, right? You are night clubbing, whatever. Why you cannot have breakfast? So all these old rules that we're all engaging, what we need to do, we need to start looking to the customer. I call it the cousin principle. Um, in Greece, we've got phylloxenia. We're very hospitable people. So when your cousin is coming, you don't say you're going to have breakfast by 10 o'clock because I'm going to close, I'm going to close the, the kitchen afterwards, right? Um, if, they don't, if they don't arrive on time or you're, you're constantly uh, following up, what time is the flight? Has, has, has it been delayed? And you're taking, you're taking advantage of those things. Funny enough, smart tourism is doing exactly that. It just, we just bring the ecosystem and we're following all the different people together. And we're innovating in, um, in, in the process and the, and, and the products that we do. Uh, last point, I was recently in China, in Beijing, and I went to the opposite house hotel. And I went in and I was looking for a reception. I couldn't find the reception. And I was getting a little bit annoyed. So this nicely, um, nicely dressed gentleman came up to me. I said, where is the reception? And he said, the reception is here. I said, what do you mean? He said, where do you travel from, sir? I said, I just came from London. I said, you wouldn't be looking for the reception. We are here to, ser to serve you. You arrived, I'm receiving you. I said, listen, mate, I'm a tourism professional, right? So I need to have my things. So he said, OK, that's fine. I said, how do you do keys? So he had a tablet. And he had a, a, a reader, and he was producing a tablet, uh, a, a key. So he gave him the key. I said, how do you take credit cards? He said, that one. So I said, I must cut this guy. You know? I said, where do you charge the tablet? <laughs> so they had a corner somewhere where they had a desk on the back office that they had 10, 12 tablets that they are charging all the time. Because what they understood was the customer was coming to them, and they had to look after the customer. It was not the customer who would come back to you and say, I can have breakfast up to 10 o'clock, right? If I was jet lagged and I want breakfast at 2, 3, why should I not have breakfast? And then if you start thinking of that kind of processes, what does the customer want and go all the way back? Then we start changing the process back to actually serve our customers. It's simple things. And things that we can do, and things that they can be sustainable, things that they can improve our competitiveness. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Williams, you have a marketing background. Yes. Uh, you've worked uh, a lot in uh, uh, advertising. advertising, yes. And Greece is now a prominent destination for many people around the world. And it has reached an extremely high level of popularity. What do you think is next? Many things. Uh, first of all, we have to develop our next four-year plan because we don't even believe that it will last more than four years. So uh, we are completing our current four years plan uh, by December. So we are working on the next four uh, years plan, which is very important to have a clear strategy and a clear uh, path to follow. Uh, but nevertheless, we do a great finish up. Uh, first time in my professional life, I used to handle uh, not just with one advertising agency, but uh, a joint of advertising agencies. I was the head. And my dream was to advertise before Christmas. It was never happened. This year, for the first time, will be on air for pre-booking. Mm -hmm. So it's a great finish up. And we finish up with a, a great uh, project uh, with a GM, joint uh, uh, effort for uh, uh, city breaks in Athens and Salonika in the main uh, European uh, countries. But we will st still try to do the, no the legislative work, which is very important. It was already mentioned. We have to make clear thematic uh, areas. 
for golf, for tennis, for different, uh, solve the little legislative uh, problems, which is very important. Education, we are trying very much to increase the level and the quality of education of tourism, which uh, belong to the, uh, the responsibility of the ministry. So, there are many things to do, but I feel comfortable that we have already created the momentum. Uh, we feel that we will surpass the 32 million this year. This September was the greatest ever September, as far as uh, arrivals is concerned. So, we have many plans and uh, many things to do. So do you feel that uh, tourism, uh, for Greece at least, as, a, as an industry, is here to stay for the years to come? I believe so. I believe that we have passed the critical uh, point and we have created the momentum. And keep in mind that this happened in a very smart way. Uh, during my time from uh, the other side, when I was the advertising agency of GNTO, we, have, we had budgets of 45 million, things like this. No, now we do everything. Uh, going to exhibition, uh, the trade fairs, uh, do familiarity trips, uh, do advertising, uh, hospitality, everything we do with less than half the money. So I strongly believe that this will improve as well, because the economy is improving. And I, I strongly believe that the next five years will be even greater for Greece. So it's safe to say that it's a great environment for new entrepreneurs to yes. enter and, and bring the innovation so that the private sector, not only the public sector, like, air, like the airline you mentioned before, uh, a big corporation like the hotel, uh, even our company would be willing to engage all these efforts or this innovation and make uh, tourism a little bit uh, more uh, stronger. Strong, I would say, for the I years to come. I do believe. And we closely work with tour operators, the big tour operators all around the world, not just the big ones, the small ones, the specialized ones. Uh, and uh, we try to make combined. Uh, activities, let's say, combined marketing efforts. So we open to discuss any proposal. I think we need to, to bring some tourism into Trikal as well. Where's the mayor? <laughs> the mayor is not here. Um, Mr. Vasilikos, um, Greece and Athens has uh, joined the list of uh, the top tourist destinations, as I mentioned before. Uh, and at that level, the competition is quite strong. Uh, with uh, most destinations working hard to maintain their title, actually. Can you tell us about two or three initiatives by hoteliers that you think have been instrumental in adding uh, to the cities, uh, to the country's uh, increased popularity? There are many over the past few years. Bear in mind that uh, especially Athens went through a very tough period. Uh, and it was very difficult to at some moments to, to see beyond the fog. Uh, we're talking 60% uh, loss of, uh, of turnover for hotels. It's, it's difficult numbers. It's, uh, it's not a small crisis. And it was a very long crisis in time as well. So obviously today, like Onassis used to say, it doesn't matter what they say about you as long as they talk about you. But for, for, for many years, we didn't feel that. Today, obviously, we are looking at um, uh, we are looking at the rebound. Athens is doing much better. On the other hand, uh, I, I would say that the best answer to your question is the fact that before the crisis, it wasn't given that public and private sector work together. Before the crisis, it wasn't even given that private sector worked working together. Worked together. And yeah. this, I think, is something we overcame during the crisis. I'm very happy to say that we, we, we played a strong part in that, uh, building very strong partnerships at the beginning with the private sector and then, of course, with the public sector, uh, which we, uh, with, with which we've been working very closely. So 
I think this is something that uh, we need to keep uh, exiting the crisis and, uh, and this is something that makes us stronger. Now, what's very important from now on is, is to look at the, the years to come. We, we need to, to build a strong strategy and we need to overcome, uh, basically to overcome the, the very reasons why we were in crisis. And um, there is the big bet. We need to uh, stop repeating the same conversations years after years. We need to invest into infrastructures, like you said very uh, rightfully. We, we need to, to build the strategy for the next years. We need to stop talking about seaplanes for the past 20 years and see them fly at some point. Uh, I'm not saying that seaplanes on their own will resolve any problems, but it's, uh, if we look at all these little problems that we, like you said, golf courses, or uh, you made a very nice comparison with Barcelona. We, we always compare Barcelona to, to Athens, both, both being post-Olympic cities. The work that has been done in Barcelona is explicitly going to the niche markets, creating the, the value added for the destination by bringing new clients to the city that weren't coming before, convention centers, which unfortunately still doesn't exist in Athens. So all these things, there's no magic recipe, but we can very easily see what others have done successfully uh, in order to, to build uh, a sustainable strategy for the years to come in, uh, in tourism. And I think this is the very big bet today. If I was to sum it up, is, is to go from quantitative to qualitative at this point. I, I always say, we, uh, I was asked last week at another conference, what do you think? I said, it's very simple. If you look at surfers, you know, that, you know, they're, they're in the sea and the, the big wave comes. So at some point, they're on top of the wave and so they, they start standing on the board. There's two choices. Either you build a good strategy and, you know, everybody at the beach would say, wow, look at him, it's fantastic. The other choice is you end up on the rocks <laughs> with the yeah. wave in the foam and that's it. So I think we're there now. Uh, we, we're at a very high level. We're, we're, um, we need to build our strategy in order to ride the wave. Uh, if so I may add, Athens has profited much more than the rest of the country from this momentum. Mm -hmm. According to the figures of the eight months, Athens is running with a 20% increase. Well, they're in arrivals than the whole country is around 14%. Uh, and I think what Mr. Vasilikos said, it's a very key target for the next plan to increase the quality of our guests. And uh, I think we have seen figures this year to prove this. I mean, we saw that the increase of revenue, it, according to the data of the Bank of Greece, is much higher as a rate than the increase of arrivals. And this is due mainly to Americans. We have a much more in, bigger increase in Americans than uh, the rest of the countries of overseas. And we have seen from uh, India and China, and they spend a lot from India and China. More than 100% increase in the eight months from India and China. Small figures, but important figures. Interesting, interesting. Well, I think our time is up. Uh, Let me just uh, um, say something to conclude sure. a little bit on this. First of all, um, half an hour on such important things, kind of I was gonna what, what, they, yeah. what they call as finaki, you know, just, just a thought to kind of understand that this is really important, number one. Number two, um, I'd like to say that the, national, the Greek National Tourism Organization Visit Greece in particular has done a tremendous job on social media. And the guys that they're doing that, the three, four girls who are doing that, they're doing a fantastic job. And I'd like to ask all of you to go into Visit Greece on whatever you do, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, wherever your habitat is, and actually retweet and engage with that because they're doing a phenomenally good job. Um, I think we should not kid ourselves. The, the, the picture is not as rosy as, as a lot of people are thinking. And I've been around in tourism for about 30 years. We really need to structure, we need, to re need planning, we need, to, we need expertise, and we need to operate in, in ways that will give us the strategy on the long term. 
And I think we need to engage in the research and the education, take the right people with the right skills on that. And, and I think the minute we start doing that, we'll look into that. I've suggested to EFI that we do a reload uh, Greece for tourism in particular, so we'll have the time to actually discuss those things in more detail. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. very, very much for being here. Thank you all for having us. <laughs>